These sleek beasts soar through the sky at deafening speeds. Flying them are pilots and weapon systems officers who handle graveyard spins and sharp turns in the air. But is man really made to fly? Pilots and weapon systems officers have a lot to deal with on top of flying and taking aim when they're up in the air. I'm here at the Aeromedical Centre beside Paya Lebar Air Base to find out what physical strains they experience and how the doctors here help them. Uh, the Aeromedical Centre, or ARMC for short, uh, houses the expertise both physically and academically for aviation medicine and aviation psychology. So one of our responsibility is actually the raising, training and sustaining of the aviation MOs and aviation psychologists. The ARMC handles the aircrew from the time they apply to their yearly training with the centre's equipment. During the medical, applicants are put through a series of tests which include anthropometric tests. These measure if he or she is the right size for the cockpit. This used to be done by the ARMC doctors, but that changed in 1996. There was a, a mindset change and uh, we recognise that apart from just doing the basic uh, examinations and selections and training, that we actually have to be more operational to support the RSAF. Um, so what happened in, at that point in time was uh, we outsourced and uh, that freed up the resources. One of the mentality and one of the mindsets that we have here in, our, in, in ARMC, which has been passed down from our forefathers or, the, or our pioneers, is that uh, we wear our stethoscope over our flight suit. Okay, uh, what that means is actually that uh, while we were employed as doctors in the Air Force, uh, we have to understand that we are actually operational for, uh, as a base. I'm suddenly drawn from the interview by an almost silent, steady humming. This is the Human Training Centrifuge. It takes pilots and weapon systems officers up to 9 Gs to prepare them for what they'll feel during certain flight profiles. Let's have a better look. The centrifuge's cockpit was made to be as realistic as possible for the air crew. The controls here can be customised to mirror those in the F-15s and the F-16s. This is Singapore's second Human Training Centrifuge, or HTC. The first one was set up in 1996. This entire wing of the ARMC was built specially to house the HTC. At the speeds our fighter jets can go, sudden turns in the air increase the gravitational pull the crew feels. Just as you are, right now, sitting down watching this clip, you're pulling 1G. The sudden turns that F-15s and 16s can make will cause the crew to pull up to 9Gs. That's nine times their own weight. Imagine nine times of your weight weighing down on you. With that amount of weight, it'll be hard to lift your hand and even breathe right. Not to mention how all your blood would rush away from your head too. Sounds extreme, doesn't it? Uh, when we are cruising along, uh, normally they'll be in a normal 1G condition. However, when we start to go into combat manoeuvres, our uh, tendency is we have to pull uh, up to uh, probably 8 to 9G depending on your aircraft configuration and as well as uh, the mission type that we are flying for the day. G-forces are actually an insidious threat in our daily flying operations and uh, this machine helps us to make sure that we are ready for the G at all times and uh, as well as uh, helps us to make sure that we are physically conditioned to uh, do our daily operations well. The pilots and weapon systems officers aren't alone in their fight against G-lock though. To fly, they don G-suits which squeeze their lower limbs to help circulation. The HTC alone can't prepare pilots and weapon systems officers for flying. The ARMC houses another very special machine that can help though. It's capable of movement in all directions and can spin you dizzy. If you think you have a good sense of balance, this machine will prove you wrong. This is the Spatial Disorientation Trainer. Our sense of balance depends heavily on the movement of fluid in our inner ear. This system is called the vestibular system and it reacts to the rate of change of acceleration. So if a pilot takes a banking turn to the left, the ear fluid moves to the right side and tells the brain he's tilting left. If he continues turning though, the fluid compensates and stabilises, making the pilot think he's returned to level flight. This is an illusion even the most seasoned of pilots have a hard time solving. Our sense of balance depends largely on our sight. If we can't see visual cues like the ground, it can be hard to tell what level is. Sometimes pilots can't see the ground due to bad weather conditions, and if they fly based on what they feel, it spells disaster. They might be plummeting to the ground and not know it. This is when flying with instruments is especially important. 
planes are equipped with instruments that indicate values like tilt. The SDT comprises two main components. Number one, the machine. It has six degrees of freedom motion. This is controlled by number two, the control station. This is where training officer Yo Chun Yong sits. I was really curious about what pilots see and feel, so when Mr. Yeo asked me if I wanted to take a spin in the SDT, I couldn't pass on the chance. This shows that I'm a bit short to be a pilot. <laughs> Fun was an understatement. It was quite dizzying, but was such an experience I almost didn't want to come out. Every three yearly, when I come back for such refreshers, it's a good tool and a training aid to be able to assist me in recognising symptoms and to be able to apply the correct actions. Getting into the cockpit of one of the RSAF's planes requires a number of other steps. Join us next week as we check out how this blue behemoth and this silver raptor help pilots too.